Imagine that you ran an e-commerce business that had raised $77.5 million in venture capital. How would you use it? How would you leverage that money to generate even more sales? And what would you do when it came to Google Ads? That's exactly what we're going to look at in this episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to the very first episode of Google Ads Aces, the show where we take a look at the Google Ads performance of some of e-commerce's biggest and hottest brands. We will take a look at what's going well, what's not going well, and of course, what we can learn from these brands that we can use to take our own campaigns to the next level. The business that we're going to look at today is Alberts. And Alberts sells eco-friendly and comfortable shoes. The company started from a successful Kickstarter campaign in 2014. Um, and right now they've expanded our range and they're selling a whole range of men's, women, and even kid shoes. So they were one of the first competitors in the niche. Um, other, another brand that you might know uh, that sells very similar items are um, Incas, uh, which also sells these very comfortable uh, minimalist uh, sneakers. And a lot of these companies have pulled in massive amounts of VC funding. Um, as I said in the intro, uh, Alberts raised a total of $77.5 million. Um, so that's a huge amount of money. So as with most B2C uh, brands um, that sell directly to, to the consumer, a lot of that raised money uh, is plowed into customer acquisition and more specifically into ads. Um, so it's hard to get exact numbers, but I've heard numbers being thrown around between um, that Alberts is spending between $100,000 and $500,000 uh, um, a month in, uh, on ads. And most of that is actually spent on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, they're going pretty hard at it. But part of that is also spent on Google Ads. So in the rest of this video, um, I'll analyze what they're doing specifically uh, on Google Ads. So despite the big budget being plowed into Facebook and Instagram, um, Alberts spends a lot less on Google Ads. By the way, in the rest of this video, or you might have already heard it, um, I will confuse Alberts, which is the name of the brand we're talking about, and Alberts, which is another name of a, a person or something, or a bar. Um, so if you uh, see me confusing the two or hear me the two um, mixing them up, um, just have a look. I'm always talking about the same company. So back to Google Ads. Um, I've tried to do my research from all the data that I, that I could find. I use a, a variety of tools to kind of uh, put some numbers together, um, double check also some numbers to see where it makes sense or where um, certain tools um, really go over on their estimates. Um, yeah, so know that, that uh, Everything I'm going to talk about, it's what we can see from the outside in. Um, so oftentimes these numbers aren't perfect, but they will give you some ideas on what um, a brand like this is doing when it comes to their Google ads. So if we take a look at the spending, uh, we can see that they spent around. So we're, we're looking at three main things. We're looking at the ad spend, we're looking at the amount of clicks and we're looking at the CPC. Um, and right now, I'm basically, I'm, I'm singling those three out because it can kind of, um, I don't know, not, not really benchmark, but if you're, if you're working with a similar business, it might give you some ideas on, on what, what a brand like Alberts, what their numbers look like when it comes to this. Um, we'll look later at the end of the video, we'll look at more metrics. We're also trying to connect um, revenue uh, and order value and stuff into it to see how, how actually they're what their profits look like. Uh, but here, I just want to give you uh, a quick overview. So for search ads, they spend around 20,000. Um, they've spent around 20,000 um, in October of 2018. Um, for that, they got around 16,300 clicks at a CPC of 1.22. When it came to shopping, they spent $12,000, um, got around 30,500 clicks uh, at about 42 cents uh, per click. And when it comes to display ads, um, they're mainly doing remarketing, not really um, other display campaigns, but they spent about $1,600, um, resulting in 3,800 clicks at about 45 cents per click. All in total, that makes for 
hundred $35,600, giving around 50,600 clicks from Google ads at about 70 cents per click. So that's what they spend in October, 2018. The trend is going up um, as we're getting closer to the 2018 holiday season. So let's start by looking at their search ads. So they spend about $20,000 a month. Um, and Albert's has a very strong brand uh, because when it comes to organic search, about 90% of their traffic is branded traffic. So any type of branded uh, paid search campaigns that, we're that they're doing actually benefit from all the brand awareness and, and other marketing efforts that Albert's is doing. Uh, so that means that these campaigns will, um, will often get good results uh, and have very low uh, cost per click and very low uh, CPAs as well. So I think um, the, C the cost per click there is around, um, I wanna say like 15 up to uh, 30 cents uh, a click. Um, and a common question I hear from people that are new to Google Ads is, why would you spend money? So Alberts creates this demand with all these their other marketing efforts, so why are they paying again um, to, to get those people? Uh, wouldn't their website rank first and if somebody typed in their keyword? Well, first the first part uh, of, of that answer is to protect their brand and also block competitors. Uh, because Alberts and their competitors, they're extremely well funded. So imagine like 10 or $20 million uh, in their bank accounts. Um, so especially for, for a new brand, so Alberts has been around since 2014. Uh, so that's been a couple of years. Imagine you were a new brand uh, with a lot of cash and, and you want to break into the space and actually get in front of people who are interested in a product like, uh, like Alberts. So these kind of companies, they wouldn't hesitate to buy their way to the top of the search results and, and burning money just to get visibility uh, because these searches, um, they're probably not profitable for these competitors, but they just want to be there. Um, and you'll see the same thing happening, like the larger the, the item or, or the product being for sale, like not shoes, like in this case, um, but the larger the, the, the order value, you'll see other brands bidding even more um, aggressively, um, as I hopefully um, will we'll, we'll look at uh, a different brand in, in one of the next episodes. So when it comes to this brand advertising or these, these buying these branded keywords, um, if a competitor brand wants to buy the Albert's uh, or Albert's shoes uh, keyword, um, it will be actually more expensive um, for them. Because if you're a brand that doesn't sell Alberts and you want to advertise on the Alberts keyword, the way the Google Ads system works is that it's more expensive. So um, competitors are looking from a, a CPC that's that's anywhere from from like two, three, up to ten times as much as Alberts is paying. So if they're paying, uh, let's say, thirty cents, competitors are looking at a cost per click of about three dollars. Um, so imagine with those big search volumes, that will be very hard to do profitably. Um, but just because um, you run, so if you're Alberts and they, they, they run their own um, branded campaigns, they'll always be on top and they'll kind of like block off competitors. For part of this analysis, I use a tool called SEMrush um, and that gives a lot of information and insights into uh, the paid performance of uh, specific um, advertisers. So here uh, we're looking at the paid uh, at all the keywords, uh, paid keywords that uh, paid branded keywords that Alberts is appearing for. So here we see um, Alberts, we see uh, Alberts review, um, we see Alberts shoes, Amazon, Amazon coupon, Wool Runners. Um, so pretty pretty standard stuff. One thing I do want to point out is that Alberts review. Um, actually, people searching for reviews, um, there's a lot of them. Um, but Alberts doesn't have any reviews on their website. Um, so I'll, I'll come back to that later. A uh, second group of keywords we can see here is the Alberts um, shoes, Amazon, Alberts Amazon. Um, that actually Alberts doesn't sell anything on Amazon. They only sell um, shoes on their own website. So the reason I think uh, they also advertise here is to make sure that they pull in uh, that search traffic. Uh, because people looking for Albert's type or style shoes 
Probably on Amazon, you will find other brands that are selling similar items and might be bidding on, on those keywords on Amazon. Um, so actually, they, they just wanna be there and, and make sure that the customer comes um, their way. So second reason why you want to run your own uh, campaigns um, on your brand name, even, even though you're, you're one of the first, you're the first or one of the first listings popping up, um, can be to control the message, control the thing that people are seeing, and also sending people to the right place. Um, so for example, here, uh, we have Allwords returns, and we have Allwords uh, returns policy, um, and those two actually don't go to the main website. So Alberts offers free shipping um, and returns and free returns as part of the, their service. So they want to make it as easy as possible to, to, uh, to send and return uh, specific items. So they actually created a special website for this. Um, and if people search for that, they will show an ad that actually points people to the right place. Um, it is possible to do this with SEO, uh, but you don't always control uh, the, exact, the exact pages that Google is showing. Uh, another way is uh, when people search for actually your brand name and you have like new products coming out which might not be picked up yet by, uh, by SEO, you could just point people to those new products um, or to a category page or something that, that highlights them. Um, so I think this is like, a, a, they do a pretty good job of, of using this, uh, this kind of advantage uh, for running your own um, branded ads. Like I said, the brand campaigns tap into the efforts that uh, Alberts is doing in, in other ways. So when, it, when we get to the non-branded uh, paid search campaigns, this is where things get interesting because this is the, the moment when actually campaigns on their own um, have to pull their weight. They have to, um, when people search for generic uh, keywords, they have to present, the Alberts has to present a good ad uh, that gets people to uh, click through and then a landing page is actually convincing people to buy. Um, so when we take a look at the, the type of um, keywords uh, Alberts is appearing for, we see tennis shoes, casual shoes, Jordan shoes for men, sneaker games, comfortable shoes, running shoes for men, uh, men slip on shoes, comfortable walking sandals, comfortable walking shoes for women, walking shoes, most comfortable sneakers, wool shoes. Okay, so you can read yourself as well. So it's it's a whole list. Um, and actually it, it, it looks okay. They're, they're, um, they're going pretty broad on certain, on certain keywords, um, but it stays within the same um, sphere. Looking at this list of all the keywords, a lot of them are kind of like keywords, um, how you would describe certain of um, Albert's products, um, men's slip on shoes, um, comfortable walking sandals, comfortable walking shoes, uh, walking shoes, wool shoes, um, comfortable sneakers. Those are actually um, pretty good ones. Um, and then they're have a, they have a couple of ones which are a bit more of a stretch, like tennis shoes or uh, woman's shoes, um, fashion shoes I also see in there. Um, those might be uh, a bit too broad, but um, they can never know without, without actually testing um, if they can convert these, uh, these searches. Um, there's two things that, that pop out um, immediately when, when I look at this list. Uh, and that's here, this third one, Jordan's shoes for men. Um, this, is a, this is a tough one because their, their products, they are like minimalist, very simple sneakers. Um, they don't look anything like Jordan's shoes. Um, so there's two things that can be going on or they figured out that a person that buys Jordan shoes um, actually would also be interested in their, um, in their shoe, um, which is a bit of a stretch because people typing in Jordan shoes for men are looking for Jordan shoes for men. They're not looking for other things. Um, that's for example, if you know that those two customers are the same, you could uh, do that on Facebook, for example. People that are into Jordan shoes, you could show them ads uh, for, for Alberts. And maybe that's what they're doing. I, I didn't have a look at, at their targeting on Facebook. But here, this seems like a stretch. So what I think is happening in, is that they're targeting actually shoes for men. Um, and that the jo because they they're, they're haven't set their match types, their keyword match types very narrow, um, it includes this, this keyword, which is searched for a lot. Uh, as you can see, it's about uh, accounting for 3% out of 20,000. So it's not huge, but it's around like 
quite mad, like I would say $700 a month. Um, a second one is the fourth one, which actually says sneaker games. Um, I'm not really a sneaker head, uh, so I didn't know what it was, but it seemed to me that people were looking for games about sneakers. Um, turns out that Sneaker Games is a, is a conference for people into sneakers, uh, but it doesn't have anything to do with Alberts. Um, so again, this is, um, this is obviously this is one that, 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 straight, um, that can go straight into the trash, straight into the, the negative keyword list to, uh, to block out these, um, these searches. Um, and again, uh, a, a kind of indication that the keyword match types uh, might be set to broad, um, which, which means that it goes very generic. So in a, again, like 2.7 uh, percent of the budget going to uh, something that doesn't convert at all. Here you can also see in the competition, Jordan shoes, uh, it's one, the competition. So it means maximum amount of competition or um, a lot of advertisers competing for the same slots. But here it's 40 cents, so it immediately shows that this actually probably isn't that valuable uh, of a keyword. Scrolling a bit further through the list um, for other irrelevant keywords that immediately pop out here. Um, so I'm, I'm not logging into their, their Google Ads account, their search terms report. That's the place where you would find the actual search queries. But just looking here at what this tool gives me already shows me that there are some things not, not working um, perfectly. Um, so here you have, yeah, Crocs for men. Um, okay, if that's a, a competitor. Um, scroll a bit further, uh, Italian shoes for men, minimalist sneakers, um, average shoe by size. This is probably not the best, um, the best keyword for them. So it's again, um, one of them that they could add to their negative keywords. When we take a look at that list, at that long list of, um, of keywords, of generic keywords, uh, we can see a couple of teams. Uh, tennis shoes, running shoes, comfortable shoes, travel shoes, etc. Um, and the reason I bring up these teams um, is because it's, it allows you to create um, your campaign structure. Like all of these different, um, different parts will be different ad groups or might even be uh, different campaigns subdivided in, in different ad groups. Um, and the reason, so this could be like a structure of, of one of Albert's, uh, Albert's campaigns, like search campaigns. Um, and it's hard to tell the structure from the outside in, but this is a way they could structure it. And the reason for having like that many, and probably they have a lot more, this is like a simplified version. Uh, but the reason for having that many ad groups is that it allows you to, to have like the, the keywords in your ad group uh, and your, and your ad be, um, very compatible. So somebody looking for um, a woman's shoes uh, will have di very different um, expectations or things they're, they're actually looking for it or things that will trigger them to click uh, versus uh, tennis shoes or um, walking shoes or something like that. Um, so, so that's why it's important to have um, a good structure and a lot of different ad groups uh, with tightly themed keywords. So we've taken a look at a potential um, ad group structure. And now let's take a look at some of the ads that they've been writing. So a good thing um, when it comes to ads is to test a lot of different um, copy, uh, meaning that you have to try a couple of different angles and test some phrases um, that might work well in, in certain ads. So if we take a look at, um, at the ads from, from Alberts, we can see here um, that one of their core um, core USPs, I would say, or their core, one of their core strengths from their brand and uh, from their product um, is that, they're, um, that they go for eco-friendly, sustainability, um, natural products, um, that type of thing. Um, so we can see here, sustainability meets style. That's a, that's a pretty good headline. Um, another one uh, you will find here, proving good design and sustainability don't have to be mutually exclusive. So this is pretty good. Uh, so you open something um, with a headline and then you, you follow up in the, in the description text. Um, sustainable shoes that tread lightly on our planet. Um, let's take a look. Um, here, um, eco-friendly, um, they're calling it out. Made from premium natural materials. 
sustainable merino wool runners. Okay, yeah. So this is this is a good angle. So they they've tried a, they they have a couple of different um, um, different headlines and a couple of different description text that text that talk about this specific um, thing. So somebody looking for women's shoes might be uh, might be interested. Their interest might be piqued uh, with these uh, characteristics. Uh, but somebody looking for tennis shoes uh, might not. They might go for a different angle. Another interesting angle um, is the phrase um, world's most comfortable shoes. So this actually came from um, a review of the shoes um, that was displayed um, in, by time or that was written by time um, and they called it the most comfortable shoe, the world's most comfortable shoes. So they're kind of like trying to, to brand that. So that's, that's a pretty interesting angle of using something that comes from a review um, to actually use that as part of your branding and it's a pretty powerful uh, powerful thing if, if one of the world's biggest uh, media brands um, calls your, your product um, something that, that, that great um, especially if you're going for that comfortable um, shoes thing um, another thing that I wanted to call out um, is here um, in, in their in headline they're actually using uh, like the registered trademark um, and here also official site so often, um, if you're running a branding a branding campaign, and especially if, if products are sold um, on a number of different sites, you can use these uh, these things like putting the the, the R um, like the trademark or the trademark sign or, or copyright sign, no, not copyright but like trademark like the TM, um, or using things like official site or official store. Um, testing these things can improve um, click through rate. So have a look at it and see if it works. So another thing that I want to call out in their ads is how they are mixing their brand with uh, the generic keywords. So here, for example, this ad appears for people looking for eco-friendly shoes. Um, and here they call it actually the Albert's wool shoes. Um, so they could, often you will see that people, um, like a best practice that's often used, um, People will actually just use the generic search query um, in the in their ad. Um, so this this ad would be eco-friendly shoes, um, and then you would you would add like other 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 headline and other description text. Uh, but what they do here actually is they put the brand first. So they put Albert's wool runners. Um, they could also be do um, Albert's eco-friendly shoes. I don't know if if that would fit, but that would also be a good um, a good alternative to this. Um, so though, so that's something, for example, they do in this ad. So eco-friendly um, Albert's shoes. Um, so that's a that, that's a pretty good approach um, of trying to to combine your brand with an actual headline. And then lastly, uh, I want to show you. Um, so this ad actually appear for Paragon and and uh, Comfort Feet. Uh, Comfortiva. Uh, these are like competitor brands like with similar products um, and. See how, what they're doing here. So they're saying better shoes in a better way. Albert's wool shoes. So this will actually um, already implicate that. Okay, look here, we're a different brand. We're not a brand you're looking for, but it are better shoes in a better way. Um, so it's a pretty good headline. Um, it's, it's worth trying if you're gonna advertise yourself on uh, keywords of your competitors. Um, it's worth trying um, a different approach. Sometimes to, um, you, you can get away with naming your competitor in your ad. Um, other times you have to be careful with that um, uh, because brands usually don't like it. So you can get away with it by saying like better shoes or better product um, um, as Albert's is doing pretty well here. Then another thing I also always try to look at um, are what I call sales boosters. And these are things that improve the click-through rate um, and will get people in the buying mindset. So rather than just looking at the ad, these are things that um, get people to click. So you can see here like a call to action um, that can be like call to action like you see here or um, USPs um, like the, the strengths or, or the, the points of differentiation or something. So shop Alberts now, um, that's a good one. Um, get your Alberts today, um, try them. Try them. 
also some free shipping and returns. So you're already saying like, hey, we got, uh, we got free shipping uh, and returns. Um, I also saw a different uh, ad, I can't find it, yeah, here. Try them for free for 30 days. So they have a 30 days um, guarantee or money back guarantee, something like that. So calling that out uh, can also be uh, pretty effective. So that concludes the, the copy we we're looking at. Um, a second part of those tech stats are the ad extensions. So this is all of the extra real estate that Google will give you um, if you've provided all of the um, all of that data, if you've added the extensions to your account. So here, it, they, it looks pretty good. So you see here, free shipping, free returns, no questions asked, super fine. Uh, New Zealand marina wool, low cover footprint, etc., etc. Um, so these are all um, extensions. Um, so these are probably all um, call out extensions. Um, and then you, you also see here styles, men's wool runners, women's wool runners. Um, those are also um, structured snippets, which are pretty good. Um, so, so as you can see there, they've added a lot of them. Um, I can't look here. Um, if they're looking, if they're using uh, promo extensions, but I imagine not because they're uh, pretty um, pretty careful with discounts, or they don't do them. <laughs> Better to say it easier. Um, and also the, the price extensions, which can also work uh, pretty well. One thing that I didn't see uh, up here for Alberts is um, seller ratings. Uh, so seller ratings basically are these star ratings, star reviews um, of. Um, that are added to your um, search ads, but also to your shopping ads. Um, and they, they're a way, especially for non-branded search, for people to immediately see that this company actually um, is not a nobody, that it's like a pretty big company. So remember before uh, when I was talking about that there's other competitors that are that have pulled in a lot of funding. So you're gonna be competing, for example, for tennis shoes or ca casual shoes. You're gonna be competing like head to head. Everybody's gonna buy those same keywords. So imagine um, if you if you stand out with a star rating. Um, it doesn't even have to be a lot of them. Um, let's say you have like a couple of hundred. You had a couple of hundred review, reviews on your website that you can use uh, to get that star rating. That would immediately help to jump out, especially for people uh, that don't know your brand yet. Most of the text ads actually go straight to the homepage. Um, this is a big no-no for some people who uh, advocate that um, you should never be sending traffic, um, paid traffic to a homepage. Uh, but I think here, um, Albert's homepage is pretty good. Um, while it doesn't feature a product, um, especially for these more generic searches, let's say somebody looking for casual shoes, um, explaining like what Albert's, what makes Albert's differently uh, before you push people to a product description page can actually help you to sell them. Uh, because you, where, where are you going to sell them? Um, where are you going to send them? Um, what type of shoes are, are they looking for? Um, so I can imagine that Albers has done a lot of testing on this um, and that their homepage converts pretty well. Uh, but I also discovered a couple of other ads uh, pointing to more specific category pages uh, on their website. Um, so I imagine that they are constantly running tests to see uh, what converts better for them. Time to look at the Google Shopping ads uh, for Alberts. So doing an analysis like this for search ads um, and coming up with actual numbers isn't that easy, uh, but doing it for shopping, it's a lot harder since um, there's not a lot of tools that, that give you good data on, um, on, the, on the amount of clicks and on the, on the cost and actual uh, keywords that you'll see. Um, but here again, we are in SEM rush um, and we're, we're taking a look at the most um, obvious keywords. So here um, I've jumped in straight away. So um, you can you can assume that there's like a very similar split between uh, brand and non-brand keywords. Uh, and I'm going to show you later um, at a, the way that they're probably handling this. But here I want to take a look at the non-branded keywords just to see because that's going to be like the bulk of the volume. Um, and we've seen that they get like a pretty low cost per click, uh, especially compared to search. So let's take a look at, at why this is happening. Um, so here you can see the volumes for all of the um, non-branded uh, search. Um, and these are just the volumes that, um, monthly search volumes. This is not the volume um, that they're actually appearing for. 
Um, so that those those numbers aren't available. But just looking at these um, at these these things can actually already show us some ideas and, and improvements that, that they can make. Um, so here, bow shoes, which is, is kind of kind of a good one. Uh, Macy's men's shoes. I would doubt uh, they're a good match for that. Uh, steel toe shoes. I would think that this is a total mismatch. Uh, Rotte's shoes, I actually don't know, probably a competitor brand. Um, cycling shoes, yeah, de depends what kind of cycling you're gonna do. Um, best running shoes for men, they're kind of um, trying to profile themselves as running shoes, um, so this is okay. Uh, lifting shoes, I actually think this is a, a good a good match as well. New shoes 2007, cross training shoes, I think a lot of them are, are, are pretty good, uh, but I will show you later uh, a way that they can actually um, improve this. So let's take a look at a potential uh, shopping campaign structure uh, of Alberts. And as I said before, it's likely that this is a very simplified um, example of this. Um, I have some clients that are smaller than, the, than Alberts and their campaigns already look a lot more complex. But um, I'll touch on that in the end. So what could they, their campaign structure look like? Well, they would have a three um, campaign setup with one campaign targeting branded search queries, one targeting related product queries, and the third one other product queries. Let me give you a bit of an example. So for branded search queries, that could be um, searches for Alberts, Alberts shoes, Alberts for men. Um, on top of that, having the campaign, I would split out um, their products into separate ad groups as well uh, because it, they want to, they, it's important that they understand like when people search for Alberts, which products um, are most likely to convert, and especially for them, like which colors um, are people searching for most. Um, so bidding more aggress aggressively on those will ensure that the order of those um, shoes is more in the way that, um, that makes them the most money. Um, second is, um, the second campaign is a related product search queries uh, campaign. Um, these are queries that are interesting uh, and valuable for the brand, but they are not uh, as valuable as those branded searches are. So this can be bow shoes, lifting shoes, cross training shoes. Uh, as we've seen from the search campaigns, it's probably also casual shoes, comfortable walking sandals, um, those type of things so that would be in this campaign. And then a third campaign, which are other product search queries. We've seen searches pop up for men's shoes, men's fashion, um, also women's shoes. Um, they can work, but seeing the, the enormous volumes that there are, search volumes that there are on these keywords, um, I don't know if, if the Albert's products are the best fit. Uh, so putting them in a separate category will allow them to bid uh, very low and almost exclude these searches from their campaigns, um, if that makes sense. Um, in the list, in the short list, like 10 word list uh, that I've shown you, um, we're also already some, some negative keyword uh, potentials popping up. Uh, we saw steel toe, sho steel toe shoes, <laughs> steel toe shoes. Um, we saw dress shoes, we saw Macy's men shoes. Um, these probably are not gonna convert for them. So best bet would be to add them to a negative keyword list and then apply this list to that um, campaign structure to that three uh, campaign structure that uh, we've just set up. So as I said, um, it's a probably this is a pretty simple um, structure, uh, and it could be um, improved or or more, get more complicated as you go uh, in multiple countries, which Alberts is doing. Um, so you would have to replicate this, or you could use specific parts um, of your product catalog. So they sell a couple of different shoes, so they have the ones that are more like the slip-on, like sandals sort of thing. Um, they have one that they target more as like a running shoe, um, or, or as you see, like as a lifting shoe or something. Um, so that could be um, a separate three-part campaign or also men versus women shoes, um, splitting those. So it's, it's, it's tough to say from the outside, uh, but I, I think like if, if, if it were my, my campaigns, I would start with this three part setup and then maybe go for a couple of different categories uh, or different products um, to really get more granular at where your ads are appearing. Because especially in a market uh, 
that, that has this many searches, it's important to stay focused on uh, the search queries that have the most potential for your brand. And to conclude the shopping ads section, um, I already mentioned this with the search ads, but seller ratings are missing, which could be um, a good extra um, boost for their ads, um, especially for these non-branded searches uh, where they are competing against bigger brands um, that are that might be more known or might have um, more reviews or something. So if people are on the fence what to click on, they will click on the ones that um, have these reviews. As for the display campaigns, um, that's pretty simple. Uh, Alberts runs a um, retargeting campaigns to people that have been on the website. Um, possibly they have like different ad groups or even campaigns targeting people that have added to the cart um, and abandoned the checkout or that have visited specific product pages. Um, yeah, and it's pretty simple. The ads look pretty good, uh, pretty minimalist approach. Um, and just take you to the, the product um, that you are that you were looking for. That concludes the Google Ads campaigns uh, details. Um, now I want to shift gears a little bit and I want to take a look at um, putting all those numbers together. So I have some numbers um, from the research as you, can, as you saw like the number of clicks, uh, the ad spend um, and I want to put together all the numbers to see what kind of um, numbers revenue wise and profit wise they need to make to actually um, run their business successfully. Um, because I did, while doing research, I found two interesting things. One is that they actually um, raised $50 million um, in sep late September 2018. Um, and before they had raised only 25 million. So that, that shows me that um, VCs like their plan and their plan is working. Um, and actually, digging some more, I found that in 2016 and 2017, uh, Albert said that they were profitable. So again, uh, that shows that they have a model that's working. Um, so in this section, which I call like the scoreboard, um, I want to put everything together. So as you can see, these two, they came, uh, clicks and ad spend, they came from uh, the research that I did. Um, average order value of $95. Um, Actually, this is pretty solid, um, can be a bit more because they do sell, do some upsells, but they don't discount. Um, so um, if you're looking for coupon codes or something, um, you will come across this page, which is a pretty funny approach. But we can be certain that their uh, order value is $95 or, or up. Um, assuming 80% gross margin, which isn't uh, too far-fetched uh, for a product like this, if we assume an 80% uh, gross margin, uh, we can uh, we have $76 um, left. Uh, if we assume that the goal here is to break even, so they're gonna spend that $76 um, in profit um, straight into uh, customer acquisition. Um, in this case, on Google Ads, uh, that will result in 468 sales, conversion rate of about 0.9. Um, and a revenue of around forty-four thousand um, dollars, and no profit because, as I said, they, they just spent everything. That would re lead to a return on the ad spend or ROAS of um, one point three, which means that for every dollar they put into ads, Google Ads to be more specific, uh, they make back one point three dollars. Um, so in this in this very simple example. Um, everybody buys exactly once. So those 468 people, they come to the site, buy once, never see them again. Uh, I've written down here the lifetime value or LTV and CAC. Uh, and the reason that why I, I wrote this or why I included this metric, um, especially this, this ratio of LTV um, divided by CAC, is that this is a metric that um, if you do any kind of VC, um, financing or, or you put together a business plan or something, especially for e-commerce. Um, also in, in SaaS and, and stuff, you will, you will see this, but they want to see like a certain ratio. And this is not set in stone, like it depends on the type of business and stuff, but a number that gets thrown around a lot is three. Um, so because I said that they were successful in, in raising that much money, um, I think it's, it's safe to say that they will have a ratio of three or, or up. Um, and I want to show you what it takes to get to that number. Um, okay, so here actually what changes, everything stays the same. 
only difference here is um, in this, this group, everybody purchased once, never to be seen again. In this second column, everybody that purchased, 10% of those people purchase again. So without you having to spend any additional money, they come back to the site and they buy a second pair. So 10%. Uh, which would lead to 7.6% uh, $7.6 in profit. Um, here, 20% of people buy, 30%. So to get to a number of, you, you can see that this number is still pretty low. Uh, to get to a number of three, you would have to go all the way here, where people are actually making four purchases. Um, everybody that, that buys, buys uh, three additional pairs without you having to do anything because Otherwise, you're gonna incur uh, marketing costs. Then you would hit trade. So it's obvious that that customer acquisition cost is the one, uh, the limiting factor in this uh, in this model. So let's take a look uh, at what happens if the customer acquisition cost is only fifty dollars. So we've taken about twenty five dollars off. Um, we can see that even if people only buy once, we already make like twenty six dollars in profit. Um, which is, a, which is pretty good. Um, note that, that a lot of businesses, especially the more recurring there are, um, NVC funded, they might stretch this even further and, and not make any money until people buy for the second or third time or something. But uh, that gets a bit complicated. I wanna keep it simple here. Um, so if again, we're going to look for the number three here, we actually see that uh, on average, people have to buy 2.6, make 2.6 purchases um, and then we're here at that LTV uh, on CAC ratio. Um, so that would mean that we make around $147 in profit for each customer. Um, again, that's pretty high. Um, so in this model, we're going even lower and uh, we have a customer acquisition cost of $25. Um, so as you can see here, a lot of people, a lot of businesses, um, businesses that do well when it comes to um, selling products that people want and are successful in, su in upselling them um, or, or getting people back to the site and getting them to buy again, uh, will have like repurchase rates uh, between like 20 and 40%. That's a very wide, wide range, um, but I think it's, it's relevant here. So if we take a look here, uh, we see that we hit that tree, that, that uh, ratio that, that people are looking for. Uh, at about 1.3 purchases. So it would mean that 30% out of the people that bought um, come again to buy something, um, which, is, which is pretty good, um, which is, I think, at least what they hit. So that would mean that their, their customer acquisition cost is around this, uh, this value uh, to, make it, um, to make it successful. To recap, as I just shown you in this scoreboard, in the, in the modeling, uh, the customer acquisition cost is key uh, and it's key to keeping that low. So if we look again at the campaigns uh, with that in mind, um, especially the search campaigns, um, they were already in pretty good shape. Um, like the ads were, were pretty well. I think the, the structure is also, um, they have a, a pretty good structure, but something that I would pay more attention to is uh, looking at the keyword match types and looking at the search terms report to filter more of those keywords because if too much of your spending is going to keywords that it's not converting, it's gonna blow up that customer acquisition cost. Same thing is happening for the shopping ads, uh, where the search query filtering, that, that multiple campaign structure that I've shown you, um, that can help them to really filter on the most valuable search queries. Um, because it's, it's very easy for very broad keywords like men's shoes or men's fashion um, to to be pulled in and actually bloat really your, your customer acquisition cost. So that was it for Alberts. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the show. If you did, um, give it a thumbs up and let me know in, in the comments um, what you thought of the show. Um, if you have any suggestions for improvements or some other feedback, or you have a brand that you really want to see me do an analysis like this on, just leave it uh, in the comments. Uh, I would really appreciate it. See you next time.